Hello everybody and welcome, it's SD Madhaven here, and today I want to play the best and the worst. So what I mean by that is the best of this month and the second to the bottom of the worst of this month. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, this, this is going to be fun. So starting off, we have the 113 at the top this month with a win rate of 59.74. Honestly, there's only 3,000 battles played inside this tank. You know, we had the Quillen up here with uh, 14,000 with a 58.66. But the 113 with almost a 60% across the board does not surprise me in the slightest because this tank is just amazing. So without further ado, let's jump into a game in it. Uh, 113, I do load quite the amount of heat, a little bit of standards, just because... You, you feel like you get in those situations where you're you're lacking penetration. You're lacking it quite a bit. And the only way to get back up to where you need to be is, well, of course, loading the heat. And yes, I'm not afraid to do so. So El Haloof starting off. This is going to be nice. Now, 113, I, I can say this without a doubt. 3,000 matches have been played. So more than likely, those 3,000 games are being played by people who enjoy the tank. It's being played by good players, top-tier players, uh, super unis, and they're just performing really good inside of it. While the QL, QL, they haven't given away. Um, we see the Valor up on this list. It's actually pretty far down within the top 15, top 20. And then the T95 Chieftain, which used to be near the top, and now it's dropped because they gave it away. Same thing about the 268 version 5, as soon as they gave that tank away, its win rate just became a disaster. Like, really quick. And with buffing and everything else, yeah, not, not to jump into it. But 113, uh, honestly, whenever I first looked at this list, I was surprised as all heck to see this tank on that list. Just because the 113, it's, it hasn't been in the meta for such a long time and it's nice to see that people are playing this tank and having really good matches inside of it the armor on this you have a 120 millimeter top plate but whenever you max out your five degrees of gun depression or six degrees of gun depression i can't remember off the top of my head it's nothing but auto ricochet uh there is one problem however with the tank if you do shoot at the tracks whenever they are hauled down uh, you can overmatch underneath the tracks, so if you guys are struggling against this tank because you don't see it too often, uh, that is a little bit of a tip I can give you guys on how to damage a 113 that's hauled down. Or if you can hit the top armor at all, its top armor is not that thick either. Speaking of which, artillery scares me. Now, taking a definitely aggressive position right here. Without a doubt, this is extremely aggressive. But we're going to see if we can get a shot here on the side of Progetto, make him back off, and allow our team to start pushing up. We do have a heavy pulling up behind us, E75. We're going to take a hit. That is okay. Because now we're going to turn. Take our time. Don't need to take our time. Team is doing really good. Artillery. Most balanced thing that you can think of. And there we go. Progetto deciding to clip us out. So 113. Yeah, it's just, it's been out of the game for quite a while. I run coated optics, power terrain. Honestly, I don't feel like you need a power terrain in this tank. You can get away with just using a uh, gun rammer to get that 7.7 .7 second reload time. And with a consumable, you can get it down to about 7 seconds. So this thing's got a really good rate of fire. Stacked on top of that, 440 alpha. It's, it's just, it feels like an amazing tank. And I'm not trying to block off the QL here. Jetto's going to be coming up. We have a really good push with our team here. It is 13 to 14 though, so kind of a weird start. Here I am just trying to think where I can aim. And I dirt it. And artillery flying overhead. Yeah, I'm not used to doing live commentary, you guys. This is just awkward to me as much as it is to you. So we're, we're just going to full send it. I mean, I stream on Twitch. I should be okay with this, but I'm struggling. And Waffle Panzer, I am afraid. I am afraid. No, I'm not. Getting some assist off that waffle. That is nice. And E4. E4s, yes, they're buff. It hurts so very much. And with the Muppetry of the team, just not even thinking about what the team is doing, that they, the only thing they care about is doing damage as much as they can. Oh, no, that's bad. 
Oh no, that's really bad. Oh no, that's good. I'm okay. I'm alive. Oh man, 752. They just, <laughs> I guess I'm being as much as a muppet as the team. Now, 113, this is a tank that, sure, it's top of the list right now. Thing is, uh, whenever I look at this tank, I think to myself, this tank does have a very high skill cap. This is not a tank that you can just pull out and you're going to be having fantastic games every single time you play it. You're going to be doing 4,000 damage consistently. Um, there are some tanks in game that, without a problem, yes, they can do that. Uh, but this is one of those ones that it's just not that easy to do it with. This is one of the harder tanks. And there we go, Yudez pulling off from the distance, getting unspotted. Um, yeah. It's just a really high cap tank. It does really good. It's a great performing tank. If you can get the auto ricochet down, this thing will be doing fantastic plays the entire time. But at the same time, it can fall off really quick if you're not used to it. You're not used to the armor. It is it is one of the thinner heavies, I guess you can say. A lot of the uh, Chinese tanks are not super duper heavy, but they're heavy enough to be able to handle situations that get thrown at them quite a bit. And if you learn how to play them right, you know, it's not like this is a QL or a WZ uh, 111.5A, which honestly is not that high on the list, surprisingly, this month. But the QL is like sixth place. 113 E50M being up there, though. Like, E50M, that was one that surprised me whenever I first saw it, just because the e E50M, its most recent buff, which they didn't really buff the tank, they just increased its armor a little bit, but you see the easiest way to pin them. Oh, no. Now I can go through the front of an E50M. So... Yeah, it's, it's just like, it doesn't feel like it was well planned on how they wanted to buff the tanks and take care of things. Ooh, there we go. I'm going to have to be quick on this draw. Oh, no. Whiffing shells. Swapping back over to AP. Oh, no. I'm low health. This isn't going to feel good if he pulls out. He's also low health, but I'm on reload. I don't think he knows that. And I am still safe. What's really cool, though, is if, if you can get your gun depression down with this tank and you can find those positions to utilize the armor. I didn't block any damage this match, which is kind of sad, but I, I have had matches inside the 113 that have just been absolutely amazing. Now, for other players, they're pulling up the hill to try and get shots, but rather than pulling up the hill, why not try and drive away from the hill to be able to do a drop down and get your shot instead? And, oh my gosh. That's a new position. Don't copy this guy. Please don't. Ah! Ah! Oh, well, I got the assist. Now, the, the 113, this is definitely not one of those tanks that, you know, I, I recommend to go out and get, unless you're looking for a uh, faster heavy that has a really good rate of fire combined with decent alpha and just overall a really good combination to just take care of a couple of things that is needed it, it is it is a little bit off i'm having a moment a brain fart okay i'm sorry i had to pause and then start again i'm a muppet i had to look at some things here i am looking at the uh recording i see that my mic is slightly in view and i was wondering what that little black spot was on it and i was just like is something wrong is there something no there's nothing wrong you guys i am going to be trying something new whenever it comes down to youtube and twitch i want to show off gameplay i want to help you guys as much as i can uh, just because that's what I'm going to do. And honestly, second class mastery for 5,000 combined. Not too shabby. Uh, we only fired, what, one premium round and it just missed. So yeah, lo loading the heat didn't make me a better player. Using the standard rounds, though, 258 penetration. They do very good. Uh, I would like to see the PC meta of this thing being brought over, which will bring the penetration down to 249, but it will increase the power to weight. Now, up next... Honestly, something that surprised the absolute crap out of me. Down here, we have 
the version the version four. Along with that, we also have the Badger. I would play a match in the Badger, but I'll tell you guys now. That tank, it needs some love. It needs help and wargaming. They they debuffed it and then they buffed it. They didn't really think about that tank too much. So the Badger, I guess we can play that on another day. Knowing that it is literally at the absolute bottom and not just by a little bit. We're talking quite a bit. 50.48 compared to 51.28. That is quite the jump. But the Badger, it doesn't surprise me that it's that low on the list. But the one that does surprise me the most is the version 4. So up next, let's go ahead and jump into the version 4. Because th this is one of those tanks that they brought back the 300mm low plate. Uh, they did a little bit of a rework on it. Um, I would like to see the PC meta of this tank, which does give it a lot more power to weight and a lot more top speed. And in my opinion, that would be a just way better setup to have in-game than what we currently do have. Uh, we have the old version of it, which is slower. It's sluggish. It's just really sluggish. But trade-off is we have... A big gun that can overmatch with AP rounds and then we have heat rounds that just can shred armor and go through almost any tank in the game even if it's hauled down and just rip them apart so bat chat 155 58 I got clipped out by one of those today three shots that that was fun you know tier 9 t10 and just death that that's always fun it's always fun it's a blast Okay, other than that, this doesn't look too bad. Seems like a good lineup on the teams, uh, except for the uh, tier 8s on the enemy team and the tier 8s on our team. Uh, uh, other than that, so very balanced. Yes. Alrighty, but anyways, getting into it, I'm working on a couple of things. I've been taking my time. I know that I've been uploading a little bit more than what I usually do. Which usually isn't really that much, because I plan stuff. Today wasn't planned. I just jumped on and I'm like, hmm, we're going to do this, because it actually doesn't sound too bad. Now, the version 4, this is actually a tank I would recommend to grind out, because if they ever do buff its power to weight and above its top speed, guess what? You guys that don't have this tank, whenever it does get buffed, you're going to be feeling like you're absolutely left out, like no other. No, except for 4,005. Uh, that thing, it's buff. It's still super low on the win rate just because it has no armor, but it's derpy. This tank, on the other hand, when they do buff the power to weight, when they do buff the top speed, if they do, if, uh, you know, just hoping, fingers crossed by this point, it, it'll be one of the top performing tier 10s in the game just because it's going to have mobility combined with a really good gun. Uh, along with that, at the moment, looking at the map, we actually do have a little bit of a good spread. Uh, normally, playing on these maps, we don't have a really good spread right away. It's just, you have maybe three tanks come this way and everyone goes up to the 1-2-3 uh, line, or you have everyone come down here and, like, two people to go up to the 1-2-3. Uh, or, and just lots of problems. Now, what I do love about this tank is just look at this reload. We're going to be popping in a high explosive shell. Hopefully, we can get a shot on the grill. Kind of hoping he pulls around so we can say a little bit of a hello. Or, let's take a look here. We might have a chance to push down and take control of the bottom section here. There is a Yagru, a little bit scary, but I should be able to make it without taking a shot. And there we go. Real 15 now has to take me on if he wants to be able to get away. If he tries to run, we have crossfire with our team. And 769, and he's ricocheting off of our low plate. Yeah, see, the advantage of this tank, it's all about getting the flanks. If you can get the flanks inside the 268 version 4 right now without the power to weight buff, this thing is going to be performing just absolutely insanely well. Now... There is a couple things that's lacking, primarily the speed department, the fact that you have a locked turret gun, so you're not able to actually rotate your gun where you want to have it because you're on a locked turret. But even with that, the weak spot on this tank, it is not thin either. It is a decently thick weak spot. 
And with the most recent buff from the Chieftain, I'm actually just trying to squeeze a shell in there. I'm not able to, but he does get around straight into our hatch. So I'm going to be swapping over to heat. Oh, no, artillery. Bat chat. I need to back off. I'm a little afraid. Artillery on console. I don't know about you guys. Um, I do feel like they need a debuff, and they need it badly. And they've needed a debuff now for a very, very long time. Did the chieftain just push? He did just push. Okay, I need to move. Oh, man. You guys, this isn't helping my win rate talking and playing. The issues, there's so many of them. 60. What is up with all the 69s? Get out of here, chieftain. No, no. You don't get to stay. You get to go away. Now, you know, the, the weak spot on this tank, it is pretty big and horrendous. Not gonna lie. But with the armor that this tank does offer, it is gonna be performing very well. Along with that, right now, 270 meters away, we are covered by a little bit of foliage in front of us, but we're not spotted by the Yagaru. Uh, the concealment rating on this tank can be absolutely fantastic too, but then again, he probably had his hatches covered by a lot of trees. Yes, lots of trees. That's a good position. Ooh. A little bit of a small rush there. But nonetheless, good position. 688. Honestly, the 650 alpha on this uh, on this gun, it's not bad. In the time it's going to take this Yagaru to reload, I'm going to be able to get two shells in and back off safely or take him down for the count. So, honestly, overall, I, I don't see why this tank has got such a low win rate just because of the armor that it has. Don't get me wrong, the hatch is a big problem, but you can always raise your gun and then you can wiggle a little bit. Rotate that hull armor attack, and you're going to be able to bounce shells consistently and effectively and with a lot this gun is thick i think this thing is like 70 or 80 millimeters thick like you can block a yagaru shell with your gun speaking of which i actually do have a clip that i was playing in my e5 and i popped up and raised my gun up just in time and rotated my turret just in time to block a heat shell from a yagaru sure it broke my gun and left me out of combat for like you know, 10 seconds, but the trade-off is I'm still alive. I'm still able to deal damage. I still have that thousand hit points. It's going to allow me to be aggressive, to rush to a new position, take it over, and fire an outrageous amount of heat. Because heat. Uh, honestly, with ammunition types in this game, um, I've, I've been falling in love with heat more than I have been with APCR and AP rounds. And if you guys want something confusing that I can say, uh, a AP, APCR can ricochet at 65 degrees. Heat ricochet is at 85 degrees. Overmatch cannot be ricocheted, which is by rounds that ricochet at 65 degrees. So, yeah. Actually, that didn't sound too confusing. To me, whenever I first said it, my brain hurt. That one didn't sound too bad. And there we go. Bouncing, I don't even know what I bounced. All I know is I bounced it. Might have been a high explosive since he was aiming at a bad chat in front of us. And... So far, not a bad lineup, not a bad match. This went decent, you know, it's not like I gotta show off everything that this tank is capable of, uh, but die. I hate Artie. I love the fact that I gotta kill him. And on the enemy team, we have an AFK Super Conk, which does hinder your team quite a bit. Other than that, the version 4 and the 113, um, the 113 doesn't surprise me that I saw it that high up on the list, but the version 4 seeing this one down near the bottom really did surprise me just because the version 4 is a very good tank. This tank, if you get it in a, the right positions and you hammer out, you're going to be having an absolute blast inside of it. Um, other than that, maybe... In a couple of days, I can play the Badger live and get a couple of matches in that. And also practice on my live commentary because it's just weird, you know, sitting here in my room staring at a camera and holding up the microphone because, yes, honestly, I don't know how other content creators can do this without going absolutely insane. But, yeah, I'm going to go crazy doing this. Other than that, it was nice having you guys here. Um... Not really much to go over at all, except for I'm working on uh, making a video for aiming, overmatching, explaining ammunition types, and getting a better idea on how armor works in the game and where to aim. 
because apparently that's a problem. Also, don't push your teammates, and whenever you're driving in reverse, lock your turret look behind you. I had to tell Blade that. Can you guys give him crap in the comment sections for me? Other than that, nice having you guys here. I'm out. Catch you all another time.